All right, so this is our second poster, and what we did here is we are presenting the data from Parkinson's Disease Summer School. We just had 23 people from really all over the world, um, one from UK, a couple from Canada, and all over the United States come, and everybody had the exact same panel of labs done before they came. And so this was a great way to cast a wide net and kind of see what's worth following up on in terms of um, individualizing patient care and having a scientifically sound reason to go looking for X, Y, and Z. We wanted to see um, where, where are we finding the most abnormal results so that we can target our treatment a little bit more. Maybe not everyone needs fish oil. Maybe not everyone needs B vitamins. And so what we did is every one of the tests that we tested for in some way has been linked to Parkinson's. And so what we did is we took um, people, and you can see wherever it's red, you can see where, where the most people had abnormal values. And um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, this, this version of intestinal abnormal bacterial growth is really, really common. That was 90% of people had some, um, SIBO is what it's called. We had a lot of people have um, Urinary indican is a measure of putrefication in the gut, kind of a gross word, um, but it, um, it it's, you can have an abnormal indican either with bacterial overgrowth or with um, poor metabolism of protein in the intestines. A lot of people, 73% of people had elevated homocysteine, which is um, often raised by levodopa and easy, easy to bring down with B vitamins. And the higher your homocysteine, the more likely you are to develop dementia. So I am a huge proponent in clinical practice of screening all of my patients at least once a year to make sure that their homocysteine levels stay below 10. Um, 59, 60% of people had vitamin D deficiency. Um, fish oil deficiency was a really big one. Um, we had 75% of people were deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, arachidonic acid was high in 73% of people. That tells me they're eating too many animal products. Uh, chicken, beef, pork, and dairy are the major sources of arachidonic acid in the diet. Uh, this linoleic acid is mostly coming from processed foods. So what this is telling us is more fish, less processed foods and animal products. Um, blood sugar was high, hemoglobin A1C was high, and DHEA is a spunkin vitality hormone. It, it kind of is how you balance out your stress hormone, cortisol. And so that was low in a surprising number of people, 45% of people. And hair and lithium um, is something that I study, and that was uh, deficient in 33% of people. The thing I'll say about that too is um, a large number of people who were in this cohort were already taking lithium. They were already taking fish oil. They were already taking some B vitamins. And so um, these numbers are actually probably even higher, uh, but, but this is what we got in the people that we worked with. So what we're working towards here, um, the other thing that I'll say is um, I do hair analysis to look for lithium levels and you get a whole bunch of data that comes with it. And we did not go looking for manganese toxicity, but we found two of our 23 people had elevated manganese on hair. We've since followed that up with blood and urine and sure enough, um, their manganese levels certainly are high. And so now that calls into question, what is the role of elevated manganese in this person's diagnosis? Do they have manganism instead of Parkinson's? Is manganese somehow contributing? Is it just a coincidental unrelated finding? And so you can see how casting this wide net using available tools that we already have might be a kind of a lucrative way to, to find the path to targeted treatment. Um, you know, this is um, this personalized medicine idea where, where you can see too that, that patients are really different. You know, this person, you know, this, this person just doesn't need B vitamins. So, you know, you can see the dangers in doing studies where we give everybody B vitamins or everybody um, tell, take everyone off wheat, you know, or we just didn't need it. Um, it is interesting, not a single person in the study was allergic to wheat, had celiac disease. That's something that we talk about a lot. Two of the 23 people were positive for H. pylori, which could cause all kinds of intestinal inflammation. So we are working towards um, an individualized approach to medicine that is scientifically sound and reproducible all while being personalized. So um, I'm hoping that we can start to evolve panels like this and fine tune them and get more clinicians ordering them and patients asking for them so that we can start to um, make scientifically sound 
decisions in clinic instead of just haphazardly taking all kinds of supplements that we may or may not need.